When it comes to the matter of rights, it's more than just a principle of our Constitution, although it is an important principle embedded in our Constitution. But unless we have full recognition of the rights of every group that has been denied rights, then we are denying a segment of the population the opportunity to participate fully in the population. I was born in Asheville, North Carolina, into a family of uh, two parents and seven children. I was the youngest of the seven. Uh, in fact, I wasn't supposed to be here because after my mother had had five children, uh, she was advised by her doctor not to have any more because she had a high blood pressure issue. So I'm thankful every day that she didn't listen to the doctor because I, if she had, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. I don't know that law was, uh, was so much a decision as it was a process. I grew up in the segregated South. Everything was segregated. And I think it was in junior high school, what they now call middle school, that I first started getting involved in addressing head on uh, the issue of racial segregation, which shaped everything I did. When I finished law school, I was, I had already decided I was gonna go, come back to the South and finish the job of trying to desegregate, bring about desegregation and equality in the South. And it was then that I met my partner to be Julius Chambers in New York one day when I went to the Legal Defense Fund to become a part of that program. And that's how I got into law and that's how I got into Charlotte was joining Chambers in his law firm because I had planned to go to Asheville. The, uh, the court order that had integrated and maintained an integrated school system here in Charlotte. Well, one case that I was fortunate to be a part of was a case that became known as the Wilmington 10 case. The Wilmington 10 case uh, it has, has turned out to be one of the most important criminal cases um, in the history of North Carolina. The Wilmington 10 case was a case involving nine young African Americans and one white woman who uh, uh, protested the manner of school desegregation in Wilmington because black children were not being treated equally to white children in their new environment. We fought it and we eventually got that conviction overturned uh, by the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, it took a long time to do that. They were convicted in 1972. We didn't get the convictions overturned until I think it was 1981. The other case that I was fortunate to participate in was the, the Charlotte School case, which uh, was handled by my, primarily by my law partner, Julius Chambers, and he brought about the segregation of schools, not just in Charlotte, but established principles that affected all schools, school segregation cases in the nation. And I got involved in the second Swan case, I call it, when a white parent challenged uh, the, the court order in, in, in North Carolina. And that, that case went before a judge who had opposed the desegregation process from the beginning. So when that case came before Judge Potter in 1999, then uh, he did what we could predict, and that is he found that uh, the Charlotte school system was no longer a segregated system, and he lifted the court order. And just as we had predicted, within a very short time, a year or two, the Charlotte schools had gone from being the most desegregated school in the country to a completely, almost completely new segregated system. Fergie's impact on the region, the country, indeed many parts of the world, uh, is, 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 is really sort of um, subtle but, but easy to see. I think, I think his, uh, his, his, his legacy 
is as a, as a person who is upheld, and I really mean this, the highest ideals of what it means to be a lawyer. Uh, to take the case, the client, no matter whether they're popular or not, and ensuring that the system works for everybody. You said you don't ever put your idealism aside. I think that's true. You got to always have something to look forward to and something to, to do. You know, he's a unique character, a unique person, I should say. You know, he's generous, he's genuine, at times gregarious, and a very engaging person. So combine that with the advocacy, and, you know, he is recognized as one of the best litigators in the world. And, and, and that is not some false accolade. It is well-earned. Um, he's a treat. One more question. When the, when the last chapter is written on, on you and your career, personally, professionally, how do you want that thing to read? Oh, I hope it'll be real simple. I'd say that uh, I, I wanted to read James Ferguson spent his life trying to help somebody and trying to make society a better place for everybody and not just a few.